All right, everybody, so uh, this is what we got going on today. This is a 2001 Dodge Dakota 3.9 liter V6. And uh, it needs head gaskets. So we're going to put head gaskets on it. So I'll try and uh, show you a little bit better than the last video of the radiator for the razor. Try and get you up close and a little bit better camera angles and stuff on this one. So a um, couple things you can check to make to see if you need a uh, if it is head gaskets on this one. Um, I'll kind of set you guys over here and I'll kind of run through a couple things that uh, that are telltale signs. Let's see where I can set you guys at. So. Alright, so a couple of telltale signs would be one, take a look at your engine oil. For one, this one is way too full. Like the full line is like right here. Right here's the full line. And we have fluid all the way up to like here and take a look at the color when they say chocolate milk that's what they mean it's like thick it was brown I mean it looks just like chocolate milk like you just get out of the the Wally world or wherever you shop so that is one indication and then we did a compression check and uh, all three of these cylinders, 85, 90 pounds. All these cylinders over here, real low, 30s, 35 pounds. So that's a good indication of uh, head gasket or possibly could be worse if uh, they overheated it too much. Could have cracked the head completely, but we won't know until we get uh, till we get them off and go get them checked. So, all right, what our plan is, we're gonna take off this hose, we gotta take off the uh, AC compressor, the alternator, uh, the power steering here. But the uh, first thing we'll do is we'll, unconnect, we'll disconnect the battery, get it situated, and then we'll uh, pull this fan shroud and stuff off. We may not have to mess with the uh, actual radiator because this sits it sits way back here. It's way underneath the frame here, so we should have plenty of room to uh, pull everything off and not have to mess with that. Uh, we're also going to put a uh, new timing chain and stuff in it while we have it down this far because we'll have the whole front of the motor off. So we're going to go ahead and put a timing chain and stuff in it also. I mean, you're already there. You might as well. All right, so far we've taken off the uh, these plugs here. These are both to the uh, throttle body. So they're just uh, push, clip, push them, pull them out. Now we're taking the uh, cruise control and the uh, throttle cable off. I'm gonna grab a couple uh, magnetic trays for all the crap we're about ready to bolts we're about ready to take off here. I'm going to take this uh, fan shroud, start taking it off. It's just a 10 millimeter. Two on the top. Looks like there's two kind of 
midway down here on the bottom. Looks like this thing's probably in two pieces. Of course, that one don't want to come off. off and this one don't have one so I guess it was three bolts. There's that and that pulls this off straight off the top like that. This one here was hung up so what I usually do is with these we'll uh, take all these big pieces since that's a pickup truck we'll throw all the stuff in the bed. Kind of keep it out of our face, you know. Let's see how this thing attaches here. I'm gonna pull the uh, radiator hose off in order to get to this bolt. That this is like a tank, like a like your overflow tank slash shroud. So it looks like it's only got a couple 10 millimeter bolts, one on each side. So we're going to uh, pull this radiator hose off, and it's a it's a clamp style squeeze together, you know, hose clamps. So we'll just get a pair of pliers in here, channel locks, whatever you want to call them. this truck uh, probably not gonna have to worry too much about uh, draining the radiator because I'm sure all the coolant is already in the oil pan yeah absolutely nothing in that hose so I'm not surprised Like it's probably a 13 maybe anyway I got a just a medium size extension and a ratchet with my other one. Not a 13, so it's probably a 14. I don't know what I did with my other 13 deep well. So that was a 14. So I'll pull this off so I can't get to that hose. I can't get to that hose bracket. Put this bar in the way. pressure so I guess I'm not gonna be able to move it out of the way just yet. Uh, I'm gonna have to take the alternator off first I guess. So this tensioner for these serpentine belts here there's a tensioner right here and you can put a socket on this nut this bolt right here and move the whole tensioner with your uh, with your ratchet. You just gotta figure out what size it is. So not a 14, so it's probably 15. These Dodge Boy, you'll have every uh, you'll have every tool you own now by the time you get done messing with these things. Yep, 15. All right, so you push it down like that. 
See how this one, this one low. Easy tiger. This one, uh, push it down. See how it doesn't come back? Because this one is broke. The spring is in here. Sometimes, a lot of these, the spring inside here gets corroded and they'll break this spring. So, this one's one of those. So, we'll have to replace that whenever we go put it back together. But anyway, just kind of take a mental note of uh, your your belt routing. Most of your vehicles will have a uh, a uh, sticker either on the core support here on the top. Sometimes they're on the hood, the underneath side of the hood. That shows you the routing of the belt. <clears throat> but uh, if you're not very good with that, you know, pull your phone out, take a pic quick, pic quick picture of it, and uh, you'll be able to see exactly how it was if you can't really understand how the drawing is. But, so we'll get this out of the way. All nine feet of it. Then what? Then we'll get to the alternator so I can get that hose off there. Come on. It's like a Rubik's cube, but not. Look at that. Look at that thing. Big as the truck. All right, so we got that hose off there. Took the alternator off. Just a couple screws on the back, little screws holding the uh, power wire on. One plug. Well, that's for the that was for it. One plug for the alternator, and then uh, we took that hose off. So now we gotta take the we're gonna take the air compressor for the AC off. It's a 13 also. Looks like four big long bolts probably go through. That one's gonna be tricky, of course. Lines right in the way. We'll pull these off. Like I said, if you have trouble remembering where the bolts go. You know, you can either like, uh, sometimes I'll take like a piece of cardboard and stick them in the cardboard, you know, where they go, if you have trouble remembering, but see how these are like corroded, they're all going to probably be the same length, but uh, I'll, I'll just remember where they go. I always double check the length though, just to make sure when I pull one out, so those two are the same. Sneak in there. Sneak. No. Of course not. Thirteen wrench. These little uh, ratchet wrenches are super slick for like spots like this where you can. Uh, it's a wrench, but it's a ratchet too. So you don't have to keep taking the wrench off. Makes it nice in these tight spots like be able to use these. The only problem with them is, is you gotta like this one's a box end, so you gotta make sure you uh, have room to take it off of the bolt. Like if you back the bolt out and the bolt gets too close to these lines, see how it trapped my wrench in there? So you can't, uh, sometimes you have to use the open end, you know, if you run into a problem like that. But as we pull this bolt out, we'll be able to uh, just leave that one in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I need to pop off this uh, cable here, throttle cable. So it just pulls off the back, it's got like a little hook. that like hooks over a little, little eye thing and then right here there's a uh, it's like a little 
you know, little squeeze job, you just take a screwdriver and kind of squeeze, squeeze one in, squeeze the other in, and it pops out. See, he's got these little, it just snaps in there, so not too, not too difficult. We'll have to move this over here and kind of hold it out of the way. Then we can pull this AC off, and I'll just fold it over. Not to get that one loose. So see, that's a little stubby one. So see how that's a little stubby one? That's a little different. What I'll do is I'll pull this bracket off. I'll take that bolt. And I'll just put it right back in there. A couple threads. That way I know where it's at. Put the bracket up there. And then uh, we'll just pull this whole unit off. There is a plug right here. It looks like for it. So. It's a little squeeze. Here's another. Uh, another line right here in the way. Another hose. It's a uh, another squeeze style. It's for the uh, heater core. So we pull it off. Otherwise, it's gonna be right in the way of everything. So. I hear water. I don't know where from. Um, I don't know where that's coming from. some water in it. Well, we'll check into that. Alright, now we got all that stuff out of the way. Now we gotta take this fan off. And it's a uh, clutch fan. So see how it spins when I'm holding the nut? So when you try and loosen the nut from the pulley, there's nothing really to hang on to unless you put like bolts in here and stuff like that. But sometimes you can take a wrench like that and if you hit it just directly on the top of it. It jars it enough. Sometimes it does. All right, so I don't know if you can see this setup. We uh, we went ahead and grabbed the serpentine belt back out of the back, and we just wrapped it around the pulley, wrapped it around this pulley, and then we just pulled it tight as we unscrewed this. So basically, what I'm saying is you should probably take this bolt off, this fan off, before you take the serpentine belt off, because then the tension from that would have held it a little bit better, so we wouldn't have to try and do it all by hand like we did. So future reference and we got one here at the top and then that is it for the power steering those two are the same so they can go back wherever they want to go whenever we uh, put it back together so I'll just rock this forward out of the way 
That'll give us plenty of room there. No, no need to take anything else off of that. Now down here at the bottom, there's, there's a wire in here that runs into this little metal tab. This little metal tab has some bolts on it. It's probably gonna have to come off because it goes through that front cover, but I'm gonna go ahead and take off the top of this front cover, which is probably, looks like more 14s. So, I'll go ahead and pull them off. I'll keep all these together. I'll know they kind of all go. I don't know if I need that one off or not, but. There's those two. And there's this one. That is the water pump one. It's not that one yet. This bottom one here. See those are the same. Of course, that's not going to come off without that being on. So I'll take and grab it with a 15, maybe. See if I can't buzz this pulley off. Or just move the move the uh, tensioner out of the way like that. Things junk. Yep, there's another big long one. Same size as the other long ones, so. Yeah, one behind there, so let's gotta pull this pulley off. Pull that pulley off. Leave the bolt in that pulley. Is that way you know that bolt goes to that. We got one more here. Buried. That's the same size as those three, so there we go. So now that bracket comes off. Boy, they did not want that to move. All right, so we got the other uh, heater core hose off. It was right here. You have to take this uh, plug off here. It's like a little spade unit. That's for your temperature sensor. And then we had to take a ground wire off of this hooked back in here. The coil, coil pack is situated right here. You have to take it off in order to get to the bolt, of course, to take this off. And then I took vacuum line off of the front of the throttle body. I took a vacuum line off of the bottom of this canister down here, which is probably some kind of evap or something probably, most likely. Now we uh, took all the injector plugs off, took the sh opened the sh took the Schrader valve off. We drained the Drain the pressure off the line right here, off the trader off the fuel rail. And then uh, now we're gonna have to pull this fuel line off because we're gonna keep the uh, fuel rail and the injectors and all that in the intake. So you have to have these little tools. They're like a fuel line. What they do is you get them like in a, in a kit like this and they're all different sizes. And the way they work is they go over the line and then you push this into there and there's a little spring in there that opens up and then it allows you to pull the line off of the tube. It's like a safety, it's like a safety lock in there. So you find the right one and then you push that in all the way like that. And then you should be able to pull the whole thing off together. You should be able to pull the whole thing off together. see it's got like a little like a little collar on here that this snaps onto and that basically pushes these little springs inside there I don't know if you can see those the little springs inside there that basically pushes those springs out to release it from this little ledge so yeah pretty nifty it's one of those things that uh, you know as a mechanic you have to have them. I mean, it'd be really tough. I mean, you, I'm supposed you could try to get by without it, but boy, it'd be tough. You'd have to really engineer some kind of way to put a bunch of little prongs in there, but it'd be hard to do. 
these aren't that expensive so they're worth their weight in gold so all right so now uh there's another vacuum line here to the valve cover i'm just gonna pull it off set it up here on the on the truck bench and then uh so this is all this we've got another vacuum right here to the uh brake booster for your power brakes so it gets the vacuum from the intake right here so we're going to pull it off easy as four five six Break the seal loose, just kind of grab a hold of it and rock it back and forth. Then you can pull it off. Swing that up here out of the way. And when you swing all this stuff out of the way, just make sure uh, you remember what swing is what, you know? A lot of times the stuff will fall back into place when you go to put everything back. It'll kind of fall back into where it wants to lay anyway. Now this big wiring harness, it runs into this fuse box into the ground there's another ground here i'm about to take off but i think what i'm going to do is once i take this ground off i'm just going to rock this wiring out of the way over here and i think we'll be able to pull the head off but this is probably going to be a uh, 14 again and look at that look at that expert engineering i gotta take the i take the heater core tube off in order to get to the bolt that's holding the ground on so we gotta pull that tube off just to get to the bolt that holds the ground on yeah If there's any engineers watching, you know what I'm telling you right now. <clears throat> Stupid stuff like that, uncalled for. So see, I'll be able, I'll be able to pull this up out here out of the way. Maybe something like that. we get the valve covers and stuff off then we'll be able to see more of what I gotta move go ahead and pull the plug wires off already pulled the plug wires off that side dad picked the easy side of course you know he picked the he picked the drinker side so we'll just pull them out of the way and let them move them wires move out of the way a little bit that might be enough room like that. Kind of see if we can tuck this behind the there. Maybe. Don't worry about anything you hear cracking right now. We'll deal with vacuum leaks when we put it back together. <laughs> anyway, so now the wiring is pretty much out of the way of the va valve cover on this side. Pull that side off. And then uh, we're gonna take this gigantic front bracket off here. So this kind of like up and over the intake and everything anyway. And we're gonna have to get some, we're gonna take the water pump off. So we'll have to pop this big radiator hose loose. And uh, maybe I'll just take off these two other bolts here to free up the uh, power steering bracket. And then we'll just lay it off to the front here. So we'll see how See if we can't do that. Another 14. So this bracket comes off like that. And then there's another 
set of 14s behind it. So here is the bolt that goes into the head. So there's the top one's got a little stud on it. I'm gonna need another magnet. Try to get. So what I'll do is I'll put those bolts and these nuts. These nuts go on these like that. So I'll just kind of throw them back together when I get this other one off here. Just kind of keep those together so I know those two go together. And then we have, looks like a big long one here. Looks like a 14 or so. See that one's pretty substantial. All right, so now we're gonna take this bottom radar hose off. We repositioned our uh, catch bucket because there is, there is gonna be some, looks like there's some fluid in here, so. Try to rock it off easy. Kind of hold it. <laughs> that way you don't, you're kind of catching most of it, maybe, in one spot. The more you can catch with the controlled release of the hose, the better off you're going to be, trust me. At least it looks like it's water, it's not antifreeze, so it's just not going to be slippery. It's pretty nasty though. Probably never been flushed a day in its life. Look at the rust in that dude. Look at all the crap in there. The gunk. That's what stuff, that's the kind of stuff that gets in your heater core and stuff and uh, causes you to not your heat not to work so well that's why you need to flush out your uh, radiator every once in a while check this out look at this I don't know if I can well anyway look at the amount I don't know if you can see it but the amount of gunk and that's all the way through your radiator guaranteed so Just gonna push this out of the way because that'll be fine right there. Alright, I may be able to take this whole big bracket off with this uh idler and all that with a couple you know just a little manipulation here and there. So that's gonna be a 14 also. And the bottom one's gonna be, should be a 14. You know how that goes. I need a little extension for that one. And I already have like a little swivel on here. All right, so now we're going to uh, take these bolts out for the intake. There's one, two, three, four, five. Five on this side, six on this side. And we'll just, uh, I've got a swivel, like a, one of those swivel sockets like I showed you before. This is a 13, actually. Might be a 12, hold on. Nope, just a sloppy 13, I guess. So we'll rip these off real quick. And then we'll be able to pull the intake off and then uh, see where we're at. These bolts, I'm gonna grab another uh, another magnetic tray. That way I can keep all the intake bolts together. See if they're the same length as I take them out. Sometimes this could be where you'll have some that may be a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, depending on how far they're going into the motor. There's those five. We'll get six of them over here.
I do that, that way I can kind of keep. We got front cover bolts and water pump. And this one's the uh, intake. And this one up here is alternator and uh, power steering pump. So if you have these nice little magnetic trays, you can kind of keep your bolts somewhat organized. I'm gonna grab a uh, small pry bar. You may have to pry this a little bit. I mean, maybe not. Oh, look at that. Didn't have to. So what you wanna do is make sure all your wires are out of the way because this thing is probably not gonna be that light. So it's, it's not going to be light, probably. Yeah, it's not going to be light, probably. And it's stuck on something. There we go. Uh, not too terrible. Ooh, look at that mess. Look at that yumminess. If you ever take one off like that, people, and see that? See that? That is water and oil mixed together. Coolant and oil right there. Look at that. So that is definitely not good. But that is definitely a good indicator that uh, you got some uh, work that needs to be done. We'll just sit this over here by the side for a second. Take a gander at this mucus looking holy mackerel that is nasty well, that's why we're fixing it that's why we're fixing it oh well looky there one two three four five there was six bolts in there that head of that one broke off so there were six on each side so we'll go ahead and pull these valve covers off next and then we'll uh, get back with you guys and uh, show you how to take the heads off. All right, so now we got the valve covers off and you can see just how nasty these are. I mean, thick caked stuff. Yeah, whoever was driving this just kept putting the antifreeze in it. Kept putting antifreeze in it. You kept putting it. In. Not even that. They just they were they resorted to water. They'd getting tired of affording antifreeze. They went to water straight water. So, all right, we'll get these uh these head bolts are probably gonna be big ones. They're probably gonna be looks like a sixteen maybe. We'll try that. Sixteen. And there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably eight. Probably eight or so, yeah. These ones may be a little bit difficult to get. We're going to have to take the intake manifolds off to get those, so. Exhaust. Our exhaust manifold. So we might as well go ahead and we might as well go ahead and get those now. Might as well go see how many how many of those we can break. Two broke off on the front side over there. And of course they're I guess an eleven. already gone that one's already gone so i guess i only got two to worry about on each side huh that back one is that back one gone? Yeah, one's in there <clears throat> that one up there right there right there mm -hmm. two are gone. Well, i guess we only gotta worry about two on each side two on the front over here and two on the back over there so we'll uh Break them off every week. We'll uh, see if we can't uh, 
Pull it off. <clears throat> Put a little bit of torque action on them and see what happens. I'm sure we all know what's going to happen. Hey. That one came out. Look at that. Surprise, surprise, surprise. What's that off of? Surprise, surprise, surprise. What's that off of? Surprise, surprise. Gomer pile. Gomer pile. I don't even know 11 or 12. Guess we're gonna have a whole uh, mismatch bolts, I guess. Ah, oh, I know what it is. Used to be a 12. Now it's an 11. But somebody rounded it off, I'm trying to get it off. May have to do some fancy. Man, there's some fancy stuff with that one. Like uh, hit a smaller one on there with a hammer. Yep. If you get a hammer in there, do it. Fancy. Massage it a little. Hey, it didn't break though. We didn't have to. Uh, we didn't have to take off the exhaust on the bottom because somebody had already wanted to uh, take the catalytic converters off this thing to scrap them. But well, look at that bolt, good and rounded. So that one's gonna have to. But. It did help us be able to pull them off. You see, somebody just whacked them off with a sawzall. But the manifolds look good. We'll just have to get all new bolts and stuff for them. Or at least this side looks good. We'll see what the other side looks like here in a minute. All right, so we got the heads off. And if you can tell, we got the heads and uh, the uh, tray here, there's a tray right here that kind of covers and holds the lifters in. There's little retainers. All that stuff's off there. Of course, we got water in the cylinders here from when we pop the heads off. But the amount of gunk is in this thing is really incredible. It's bad. Disgusting. But we're going to pull these lifters out. And they do have rollers on them, the roller lifters. I'm gonna put them in a parts bin and clean them all real good. But you can see just how disgusting they are. I mean, that is like terrible. Terrible, terrible. This motor's probably been running with a busted head gasket for Thousands and thousands of miles, I would say. Somebody just kept putting more and more coolant in it. And 
kept running it. So really lucky that it uh that it's been a bearing or something with all that extra water in there and you know the oil turns to more water than oil so it doesn't lubricate like it's supposed to. So I'm sure that uh I'm sure there's extra wear on the can. There's extra wear on everything, I'm sure, but we're uh, not gonna worry about that because we're just gonna get this motor running just to be a parts truck, you know, go and be able to get around the snow, go pick up stuff, you know, it's not, this is an extra vehicle for my son, so it's more like a, hey, if we gotta go grab something that we don't wanna put in our car, then that's what, the, that's what, we, that's what this truck's for, so. If it runs for another 30,000 miles, be we'll thing. be. We don't know how long it'll last, but we'll find out. But we're not going to uh, pull the motor or do nothing new, all that stuff. We're just going to get it back to being able to go down the road and get some use out of it until its final days. So, well, so what we're going to do is. We're gonna put the old, we're gonna pull the uh, oil pan plug out, drain all that junk out of there, pull the oil filter off, and then we're gonna put rags in all these cylinders, and then we're just gonna try and uh, take some brake clean and stuff, and just try and wash all this down best as we can, clean it out with some rags first, you know, hose it all down with some brake clean, and and then uh, we'll put some fresh oil and stuff on the cam and all that before we put it all back. To you know the stuff back together but we're halfway done heads are off so the head gaskets they looked blowed like in a couple of spots but it's kind of hard to tell um but yeah so go ahead and uh so that's where we're at make sure you like and subscribe and uh come back next time and uh if you have any guys have any comments or whatever or any questions you know put them down there and i'll you know try to answer them best i can and uh yeah so wait for part two on this one and we'll be putting it back together soon all right take it easy all right everybody now we're just uh cleaning the parts so clean up all this junk get them somewhat clean or better than they are or were so that's where we're at now cleaning everything and then we're going to go have the heads checked to make sure they're not cracked or anything like that um, get them cleaned and checked and then we'll be uh, ready to start putting it back together <laughs>